The nature of experimental music teaches you to listen in a very open, non-judgmental way. And I think that worked really well. My name is Hilde Gunnadottir and I scored the music for A Haunting in Venice. Well, I am from Iceland. I come from a family of musicians, so, so music is the normal thing to do. I don't really remember having done anything else, really. <laughs> I switched out the, the choir practice for band practice and, and uh, started playing in, in the rock band. I started experimenting with electronics and, and that kind of led into my, my love of experimental music. I have these kind of twists and turns in my musical path. I've never made the decision, you know, to become a film composer. Ooh. Sweet! <laughs> it's gorgeous! You're hired! <laughs> Uh, well, I got involved with scoring Haunting in Venice um, really just after getting a phone call from Ken. He was very keen on doing something slightly different. As a lifelong fan of Agatha Christie, I was, I was really excited to, uh, to get to join this uh, project. The score, it's, it's almost like putting together like a chamber concert, if you will. Dark and, and uh, somber, maybe, and, and uh, slightly introverted also. There's these familiarities that have these kind of slight twists and turns that, that um, can feel slightly unsettling. The way that I wrote the music, I basically wrote these chamber pieces to accompany the film. The music isn't really following the actors. It plays along to the film and supports the, the, the tonality and the, and the feeling. Every element can almost be like a standalone element and then they come together. That was really exciting. It was very clear from the get-go that this film was going to be much darker. We were working from a, a couple of place of uh, heavy, heavy emotional feelings. He's questioning himself a lot and going through a very kind of turbulent emotional times. And he wanted the feeling to be slightly atonal and unsettling. Mom, what is happening? You know, we were not going to be doing like a sweet, um, you know, chirpy melodic score. <laughs> so I was very happy to, to join the ride for, for that, yeah. Well, I wanted to, to take a rather classical approach to the instrumentation. The strings and, and uh, wind instruments are most prominent. Yeah, I wanted it to be very organic and, and classical. There's no electronics, there's no reverb, there's nothing modern. What's so beautiful about this film is that uh, it, ha it all happens in this uh, old palazzo. And the palazzo is like, you know, one of the big sound sources of the, of the film. You hear it all the time. There's this intense listening. One of the big threads of the film is, is like this intense extended listening to, to your environment and the house and the, and the music. A lot of the score is specifically the, the ghost elements. They're quite, they're rather like dark. And I think that worked really well for the scary bits. Well, I think my favorite scene has to be the, the big reveal, and it's a long scene. It's literally like a chamber piece that accompanies the whole scene, and the, and the violin solo is really taking us on the ebbs and flows. We released the orchestra and we were left with 
just this beautiful solo violin and uh, all the sound drops out and we're just pulled into this very solitary world. It's, it's, it's really, really beautiful. You know, when you're working with a story, you just examine, okay, how can I best serve this? And I just try to really, you know, look at what's, what's the sound world? Because for me, I think, you know, it's the big picture that, that, we have to, that we have to see first. Like, what is, the, what is the story and what is the world? Like, what are we trying to say?